most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in return with having. When we do these things, we recognize the food industry in a lot of ways. We have to, because as American citizens, we must eat. Every human being on the face of the planet, every animal, every living creature that God has created must have food in their stomach. What's amazing to me is how people will often interfere with other people's right to communicate about their food, to interact about their food, and to decide about their food. It is sort of a apology that we need to make to a lot of people when we go out to dinner with them and we've already been to the restaurant but they're the first time there and then we start to make suggestions or maybe their eyesight's not as good so we have to read the, men the menu and we have to ask them what do you feel like eating what are your cells needing and that's the truth but in our world of food development we must teach our children to have a better regard of it we also must stop hiring the managers who might stay for a long time but they absolutely destroy the young person's mind. I have seen a young professional girl paying attention so acutely to the chaos that her managers were creating. It was fascinating to watch. I'm in a restaurant, I'm beginning to eat, and in comes a young military person. I will say young because he's probably middle aged and he's not as old as me perhaps and not as young as me. He's not as perfectly dressed as maybe he should be, but that doesn't mean he is not military. We have all kinds of groups of military across America, not just the national ones or the international ones we're accustomed to seeing. We also know that military garments are a fashion statement today. Many men's clothing have this this way. They started that approximately six months ago, and it's always a fashion that cycles in and cycles around, you know. The other thing we can tell about military people is how they walk, how they talk, the way they look, the way they check things, and the way they do things. It's a very ritualized thing. Almost every female officer is beyond obvious, even if she's in regular plain clothing. She could be in the hottest dress on the planet, but she'll still look military. Now that I've said that, let's continue the story. The story is that a gentleman in the military who is off duty and still needing to do things on behalf of his government is looking for food. He goes into a place and he wants to test their online ordering. As he tests the online ordering, he discovers that the first person in a Fazoli's restaurant tells him he can place the order over the phone and that's why he asked for the phone number because he wanted a menu to carry out and he wanted to be able to place a phone order. The phone number was of that location was provided with the presumption that he could call and make the order simply providing a credit card like we used to over the phone. Most people recognize the possible threat of an employee being an ill-willed person and stealing that but today most companies prosecute the shit out of that so we're pretty likely that a manager is not going to do that at least that's the theory what ended up happening was it wouldn't go through the person on the other end of the situation called three times and kept getting told that they don't take online orders so the gentleman walked all the way back to this to the restaurant a second time to ask the question and then he got more of a clarification of no they don't do that interesting how the same woman who Allied, allied that they could do that was saying now they can't do that so they moved on they chose not to order from that restaurant they lost them maybe 10 to 12 dollar sale no biggie right but how many times in the world do they do that how many times a day do they do that and the other thing was that we did try the online ordering there but it wouldn't function now would it not function because of the two people who were trying to do that in other words that there's a group outside of them trying to put the prevent them from being able to do that. The next location that was tried was a Red Lobster, but it was determined that the pricing structure at this time of day in the middle of the afternoon was still a little bit high to keep the regular buyer at bay. We moved on then to a Culver's where they definitely had the food we were after. We had a military person with a major migraine, and most people know the old wives tale that if you have a little bit of chicken, a little bit of chicken noodle soup, you might get rid of that headache pretty quickly. And for many people who tested that theory, it does work. But what ended up happening was that the online ordering system did not work. And even it took two managers, one manager on the telephone, one manager on an iPad, then he brought on his cell phone, trying to go through the online ordering system from someone out of state, trying to call in state to make that gift of food to their friend, their family, their sibling, whatever. Unfortunately, it didn't work. 
So what the manager, who was rather matronly, matronly said was, don't worry, I'll comp him food today. Now maybe they did that because he was in the military uniform. Maybe did, they did that because they presumed he had no money and they needed to help him. And they were doing that on behalf of their company, and that was great. So that part of the process to watch was pretty great. But after that, what ended up happening was the gentleman was sort of needing to meander in the lobby. And what I observed happening was a young boy from their staff, maybe 15 to possibly 18, whose name was Joss, literally went outside with a cleaning broom and a dust broom like they use in those restaurants and was actually cleaning around the man's military packs, which he did not bring inside the restaurant. That is the first obliteration of customer service and total respect that that restaurant got from that military person whose family was putting their money in that food at the time. Now, what he didn't know is what was going on with the payment of things, and so that's something I could observe from a distance. After that, he literally found that young man trying to call him all sorts of inappropriate names in his version of affection or his ideology on courtesy. He called the man who is practically old enough to be his father or possibly grandfather, depending on your point of view of how those things happen, bud or buddy. After that, the female matronly and what we mean by rather physically large, overweight woman of obviously a lesser educational background kept calling the gentleman sweetheart, honey, all this sort of stuff, which was so inappropriate to that man, you could almost see the hair on his back rising. Most people, most gentlemen who have wives, who have girlfriends, who are very devout in their faith, do not want to be solicited the salacious conversation from any manager representing a business. That person was clearly the supervisor or manager. She was clearly called to the phone to talk about things. She was clearly the one who did the compensation of the meal, despite the fact that the man named Derek was sort of allegedly there. He might have been a shift supervisor. He might have been the guy to take over next, the next uh, shift. But the point was he disappeared immediately. So in all that process of delivery of, in theory, and a chaotic process because it was very efficient and very ergonomically inefficient in a lot of ways, with a lot of turning around and that sort of thing, even though the food is made to order, it does make people very nervous when they take a long time to deliver it. It is, after Cabal, considered reasonably fat food, fast food. Now, as we continue the story, what you've heard and what you've understood from my observation as a journalist and a reporter is that those people did not do a very good job with their customer service throughout the process. They allowed young people to insult older people with conversation of man and other things. The gentleman actually thought that the young man actually called him ma'am, despite the fact that he has a full beard and a bald head, and he's wearing a military uniform that's clearly a man's one. Now, when we talk about these things, we have to look at it then from the perspective of an observer like me. It's not that I'm being picky or nosy, it's just that I thought it was incredibly inappropriate that a manager like Derek would send a child outside to simply do cleaning around one person's space. That is a disgrace to Culver's. There was plenty of spaces that gentleman, that boy, could have been in, and the inappropriateness of that child to go out for curiosity or to go out to do something ill-willed to a man who might be homeless or might just be stuck waiting for his pickup for between the two transportations he has is out of control. We have to be willing to say what is truthful, and I have provided for you a truthful story. I provided you what I've observed about that man and his feeling of lesser glory, and at this time, I'm going to close my broadcast.